Sheesh. That was CD Lamb. This is Foots the King. What's going on, y'all? It's your boy Foots here. Man, I got a load of show for y'all. Five kind of takeaways. Um, kind of like an OTA recap. Just want to talk. I got um, NBA basketball on in the background. Uh, the NBA playoffs has been really, really good, y'all. Um, it's been like entertaining. Bubble basketball was good. But when you start letting fans back into the sports world, as we hope the NFL will do, um, it just takes things up to another notch. And, and this has been cool. Also, I got a load of show. Like, I got some topics that don't even make my main topics. So we're going to jump right into it, guys. Five takeaways from week two of OTAs. Uh, and, and you hear Mike McCarthy. What do you hear him say? You hear him say, this time means the world to me. You hear CeeDee Lamb. I feel like a rookie because I didn't have this time last year. And then you see, you know, Jalen Smith, Micah Parsons, LVE, bonding. You see the offense alignment working together. Those things we did not see last year. It was just kind of like, let's just throw some things at the wall and hope that it works. All those things matter. You hear nuggets about maybe a Leighton Van Der Esch possible trade, but then you come back and you hear that he looks sharp, that Mike McCarthy's saying that, you know what, he is, um, oh, by the way, guys, this isn't even one of my topics, but you hear, oh, my, uh, uh, Leighton Van Der Esch is in the best shape that I've ever seen him in. And I'm going to hold my thoughts on Leighton Van Der Esch because I do think that he is the one player that if he comes out this year and he's right, I think that he could work his way into a contract. They didn't pick up his fifth-year deal because last year, let's be honest, with the neck and with his play, he wasn't worth it. But if he comes out and he sh and he proves and shows who he can be, man, this could be something special. But I got a lot of nuggets to get to. Uh, they, they were having fun out there, uh, flying around. Also, before I get started, remember this, guys. Hit me up on Twitter. Hit me up on IG. Follow me on both of those platforms. That's why I reach out to people. I talk to people, especially on IG, jump in my DMs. I'll shoot y'all some of my thoughts back. I'm, I'm a real personable person, man. And I don't always, like during this season, mini camp and OTA season, I don't do a video every day. I really get back to my videos heavy during training camp and um, during the season. But so this downtime is more like a video a week, but the views are growing because you guys stick with me. And when I do, you know, drop a banger, you guys show love. So I've been doing some work with Sky Still. I'm always going to do work with Joe. Vach is the homie. Vach and Jeff. Um, Kavanaugh been showing mad, mad love. So all those guys, go check out everybody's stuff, man. Go check out all the YouTube creator stuff um, because right now this community is really, really winning. All right, let's get to topic number one. Randy, the forgotten superstar. So, when I jog my brain back to that Philadelphia game, I always said, man, Randy Gregory can be really, really good, like freakishly good. And I think that he's the forgotten guy. And Mike McCarthy talked about some things that, quite frankly, I wanted to hear. How is Randy Gregory doing? And you hear him say some things that, if you really think about it, guys, he's never really had a full off season. He hasn't. And I don't think that Randy Gregory for the life of me has had a full season where he was able to really get in the flow. It's always been a suspension here, something crazy there, something, just something. And I think DQ is going to help Randy Gregory so, so much because he's already a talented player. But I think they're going to find ways to use him that we could see a stud. That Philadelphia game showed me that this guy still has it. Three solo tackles, um, basically like two sacks. He really was all over that, all over that Philadelphia offense. And I just don't want people to forget about just how good Randy Gregory can be. And it was cool to hear Mike McCarthy say, like, look, this guy still has something. And 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 just speaking on Mike, when I hear Mike talk, I just I love that it's no fluff. I do. He's straight to the point. He's not on joke time. I said it in my last video. I'm going to say it again. I just love that Mike, he's no fluff. He, he's straight business, and I like that. Now let's talk about some things that I'm not going to be homer, man. No Kelvin, no good. What's going on with Kelvin Joseph already? People are going to say it's early. Don't overreact. That's cool, but here's the deal. During the draft cycle, Foots was the voice who said, Kelvin Joseph, I love him. But the off-the-field issues are real. Now, I'm all for the boss man, fat, the rap albums, this, that, and the third. But, homie, I want to win. The fact that it's this early in and he's not at practice and there's no reason. And there's kind of like some whispers amongst Cowboys community reporters. That's not good. Like, I'm not going to let anybody in the comments 
it, it's not good. <laughs> like, don't sugarcoat this stuff because guess what? When you get to the league, you're in the league, and that's that on that. There's no more, hopefully this isn't too loud, y'all. Let me turn this TV down a little bit. There's no more, you know, you're a second-round pick or, or, you know, your talent is that great. Because guess what? The truth of the matter is you have a guy like Janoris Jenkins who could have been, for all from all accounts, really um, an elite player. But those type players never reach their potential because they always bank on their athleticism or they always the, – the top of the top guys, the Revises, the – you know, the guys who, the, the Ramsey, they spent so much time in the classroom. They spent so much time working on technique. They don't, they're, they're, they're freaks about, they're, they're, they're just nerds about their craft. And Kelvin Joseph has all the potential in the world. But this next player that I'm going to get to right now is outplaying him, and it matters. Don't tell me that OTAs don't matter. Everything matters. It's all confidence builders. You know, I'm not going to be the guy who's like, oh, yeah, you know, a interception. No, it matters. It does. Make plays every chance you get. Every time you get on the field, make a play. C.D. Lamb's making a play. He made a play last year in OTAs or whatever their little after Zoom time. He made plays and he came out as a rookie and almost had 1,000 yards. Make plays any chance you get. Right now, the fact that Kelvin Joseph isn't at practice, that's not good. I'm just going to be honest with you. I don't know what the issue is. I don't know how Dallas is going to try to cover it up because that's what Dallas does. But I just don't like it. And that's what you get on this channel. You get the real. I don't like it. Nashawn Wright is showing up. So these two kind of go hand in hand. Here's the deal. I don't care if you were drafted in the first round, second round, sixth round. When you're in the league, you have an opportunity. And I thought that Mike, Mike had a really good press conference. I thought he hit on that too. Some guys have different starting points in the race. It's all about how you finish the race. Nashawn Wright was a third-round pick that nobody in the Cowboys brash or in, in Cowboys fandom wanted. He's going out here. He's he's he, he's tight in coverage. He's sticky in coverage. He's having interceptions. He, he's, he's all over the field. Bold prediction, he's going to outplay Kelvin Joseph. Why? Because he's taking the road less drive. He's a third-round pick. He, he doesn't have the... You get what I'm saying? The 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 the, the, the promise and the, the fanfare that, that that boss man fed and all that whatever. But he's going out here and he's making plays. He's making the most of every opportunity. So right now I'm just gonna go out on a limb and say that's how things work. Everybody hated the Nashawn Wright pick. Well, guess what? He's gonna go out here and make plays. I just see it happening. He's gonna go out here and work himself on the field because you can't deny talent. And he's gonna go out here and make plays. Get ready. So somebody I don't know what's going on. But the first thing you heard about Joseph was he was out of shape, kind of swept that on the rug. Now he's not at practice. It's not good. And so Nashawn Wright is making the most of his opportunities, so get ready. There you go. Uh, CeeDee Lamb's still impressing. You guys sir, saw the uh, the first clip. CeeDee Lamb is – I, 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 I tweeted, I think he's going to be better than Dez Bryant. Um, I do. He wasn't even my favorite receiver coming out of that class, and he, he's put pie on my face. He just has. CeeDee Lamb is special. Um, he, 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 he's working on his craft. He already has the God-given ability. Like I said earlier, those guys who have that God-given ability but then take it to the next level, he's going to be he's gonna be the next Cowboys great receiver. You can just see it, the body control. He's paying attention to his routes as a, at a young age, and then he has an Amari Cooper to learn from. You hear him talk, he just says, you know, he's the outgoing, funny one, but he, he looks at how Coop works. He he's gonna be one of the he's gonna be one of the better cowboys in, in history. You could just see it, man. He he just he just has things that you just can't coach. He does. And even you saw with that catch against Minnesota last year. He's just going to be able to do things that I'm just going to say, I'm just not fair. So, C.D. Lamb's still impressing. You heard Mike McCarthy say, that's what you want to see. You want to see guys take a true second-year jump, and he's saying that he sees that in C.D. Lamb. It's very encouraging, Cowboys fans. It really, really is. This offense is going to be special. And I got a good feeling about Keanu Neal. Listening to his press conference, listening to the way he's embracing the linebacker position, I got a good feeling about this linebacker group. Um, and I, I really have a good feeling when one of these guys go down that we'll be fine. Uh, because you drafted Jabril Cox, because you have Micah Parsons, because you have a Keanu Neal who understands what it means to be physical. When he's healthy, his tackle numbers are through the roof. Um, and you hear how he talks about Dan Quinn. And he was like, look, Dan was 100% the reason why I'm here. That's fine. 
But I always looked at Keanu Neal, even when he was at Florida, as a guy who just brings that attitude. When you hear him talk, when you hear the coaching staff talk about Neal, you just hear that he's going to be that attitude on his defense. Attitude that this defense has missed. So, again, my theme for this defense all offseason is going to be one thing. Improvement. Just be better than you were the year before, and that gives this offense and this whole team really a chance to be successful. OTAs week two in the books, man. Um, some of the things that you're hearing, I'm really starting to like, but I just want Cowboys fans to understand. Let's just temper. Let's get through this healthy. Um, you know, you heard some things about Tony Pollard playing some receiver. That's nice. You hear Zeke. He looks fresh. He, he's making cuts out there. You hear Micah Parsons still making plays. All good things that you want to hear. Now I just want to see how the Cowboys put it all together. It's your boy Foots. Leave all some, leave some, hey look, leave some good questions, some good comments in the comment section. I'll get to them tonight, y'all. It's your boy Foots. Hey.